Hi guys, just in response to more questions from the Q&A. This question was from Neil and it was about the best way to set up training in which you incorporate two training sessions a day. Um, which isn't my favoured approach, but I know it's something that Joe has tried and got along with, so he is probably more appropriate to answer this question than myself. Yeah, I tried this for quite a, a prolonged period. I tend to give everything a good go when I try, I try a new training system. Uh, the principles behind it are that you get, get your heavy compound movements in early and then focus more on volume and hypertrophy later in the day with the same muscle group. Uh, with my schedule, it's quite difficult, I must admit. You need to really get the, get the food in during the day, uh, replenish glycogen, make sure you're fueled, and get adequate recovery and sleep. Uh, it's quite difficult, I wouldn't recommend it for a prolonged period, but it can be, can be useful as a tool to shock the body. Uh, but I can't stress enough, you need to be eating, eating frequently, and getting good quality calories in throughout the day. And I wouldn't recommend doing it for any more than two days without taking a day off to allow your central nervous system to recover from the compound and hypertrophic movements and basically let your body recover because you are hitting the muscle group and you're actually obliterating it rather than the stimulating growth and then you're able to hit it again with more frequency which I think Jordan's going to lead on to in the next question. So in that scenario when you are dividing your session up into two across the day and let's say the focus would be legs, how would you advise someone to target that muscle in the first session and then how would you do it in the second session? Would you focus just say in the morning session doing quads and then hands in the evening or would you incorporate just a compound focus in the morning that would be like squat, RDL, yeah. like hack squat, leg press and then in the evening say hamstring curls, uh, pull throughs, which I know is compound but it's less stressful, um, leg extensions, that sort of, that sort of type, type setup. The, yeah, there is two ways of setting it up. Uh, the one that I did and the one that's getting a lot of attention at the moment is getting your compounds done early. So you would set up, obviously having a good warm up and get the compounds early, which would generally be three to five sets of squats, followed by three to five sets of leg press and maybe a stiff leg deadlift. And then when you go back in the evening, you look at more single leg leg curls, extensions and some lunges. Uh, really hitting hypertrophy with high rep ranges. Typically in the morning you work towards six to 10 reps. And then in the evening you're looking for a anywhere between 12 to 20 reps and with less rest period and really pushing blood around the muscle group that you're targeting. Would you advise someone to do this for something that's a particularly lagging body part? It can be incorporated for that but it's generally an approach that you run throughout the week. I mean for lagging body, part, body parts actually personally would prefer to it with a little less volume and with more frequency so you're stimulating more muscle growth more frequently uh, rather than obliterating the muscle that has to recover and not hitting it as hard, which I think you are going to come on to now with another question. Yeah, there was another question in regards to if you train a body part twice a week, how do you set up your training across the week? And that's generally my sort of training approach in general, that I like to hit a body part as frequently as I can. Um, so just to break this down quickly as to why I do that, let's consider each training session as an opportunity for growth. If you train a body part once every seven days across a year, that's 52 opportunities for growth. If you train a body part twice a week, you're then allowing essentially for 104 opportunities for growth. If after each time you perform a training session, the muscle fully recovers and grows by let's say 0.1 of a centimetre across a year, the individual that has facilitated that process 104 times is going to have twice as much muscle gains than the individual that's facilitated that, that process 52 times. However, it's not just a matter of training with the same volume that you would once a week and just reciprocating that session a second time in the week. That won't work because you just simply won't recover in time. So you need to gauge your training volume and how you recover versus how soon you can repeat that. And in general, I find it's pretty much just cut it in half. So let's say in, in a typical upper body session, you, you perform four work sets for three to four body parts. Sorry, for sorry, four work sets for three to four exercises. So let's say 16 set total for a body part, which you would do for a, a larger body part. Drop that down to say eight total work sets. That will allow you to hit that body part again for a second time within four to five days. So the way I like to do 
every single training session is that approach. So then instead of them just having really short sessions in which you only do eight sets and you're out, I will cluster body parts and even just like an upper lower. So then I'll do three work sets on chest, two work sets on shoulders, three work sets on back, one work set on uh, biceps, one work set on triceps, session done. That, that will stimulate muscle and then you can hit that body, that, that whole upper body again within four days. And you can go it again, but choosing different exercises. And then go it again, choose different exercises. If you're rotating exercises in that fashion, you, you can grow really, really very well. Like I'm not a fan of, of split body part training. Um, tons of people are, and it works exceptionally well for a lot of guys. But f in my opinion, I feel you can do a hell of a lot of growing from just an upper lower split for a very long time. For more advanced trainers, Jordan, with that approach, would you recommend push pull legs a three day split? And when you're giving out your guides, your clients, would you recommend that training split initially? Or would you gauge their response? Would you do a two day on or one day off? Or would you let them go through a full split and then have a day of recovery? How do you judge that? An advanced guy, generally, I wouldn't give them an upper lower split because that tends to be not enough focus on any one muscle group. It doesn't normally give enough stimulus to allow them to develop their physique further. So then for an advanced guy, I do favour a push-pull leg split. So then they can hit things from different angles and, and have extra exercises in there that will allow that. Um, in general, I do like making sure that rest, resting across the week is quite high. Um, I tend to never have a client do more than two days.